<clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting now. Welcome to a special lecture. I'm Araj Zapar, motherfucking Divazar, coming to you from San Jose, California. This is the west side of the United States, north, south, east, or west. This is one love, one family, one nation. IMC Nation, baby. A nation of warriors, players, hustlers, kings, and queens. And we do appreciate hoes, but we have our queens. First and foremost, I'm an entertainer. Number one, everything I say is entertainment. Don't take nothing seriously. Number two, be an adult when you're watching this and never break the laws of the land you're in. That's your own uh, freedom. Whether you agree or not, be smart. If you follow those rules, we'll be okay. Let's get started. We're going to talk about relationships and what qualifies me to talk to you about relationships. Because I think if a person is speaking, they should be qualified to speak. Don't you think? I don't want to go to a fat person telling me how to be skinny. Right? You're not qualified to talk to me about that. I don't want to go to a broke man telling me how to make money. You're not qualified to tell me about that shit. Okay? I don't want to know from you if you can't do it. If I'm learning Brazilian jiu-jitsu, shout out to my teacher, Sandra Batata. I need you to show me that you could kick ass before you fucking start doing anything with me. Okay? You're not getting none of my attention. So what qualifies me to speak about relationships? In the current moment, I have five girlfriends. There are five of the hottest women on planet Earth. They're, they are what you would call a 10. Not a nine, a 10. They're the girls in the magazines, music videos, movies. They're the ones celebrities want, but I got them. I don't have to lie to one individual. Outside of those five, there's around the 10, 15, 20 that I'm fucking that I've lost count and number. And they're all pretty fine. Some are ugly. But hey, you're a man. You know what I got to do, right? All the men know we do have to fuck ugly girls every once in a while. Okay? And that's just what it is. I'm sorry. I don't know. You girls sometimes, I guess, suck dick. You shouldn't. And we do shit like that too. All right? So this qualifies me. On one end. On the other end, my longest relationship is 12 years and six months with Electra. She's the one right there in the red. If you see that, that picture, okay, that's that one. 12 years and six months. From head to toe, perfect mathematics right there, the way that girl looks. So that's pretty good. Hannah, been together over five years, Jessica over two years, and then the other ones are newer. So I'm qualified to talk about this shit. Not only that, Students of mine, as you're watching them online, have used my stuff to create powerful relationships. So that's who's talking to you. It ain't your mama, it ain't your daddy, because they failed. It ain't your friends, they failed. It ain't no teacher, it ain't no book. It's a man who lives this shit right now. As we're living, I, I'm looking at the pictures of my girlfriends right there on the wall. And I have to figure out a way to satisfy everybody, including myself and work, and do whatever the fuck you gotta do, right? So now let's get started. What, what can I say to you that would help you in relationships? First thing I'm gonna say to you, I'm gonna say relationships are the most important thing in your life. I'm gonna start there. I'm not gonna commit my life to something that's kind of important. I'm not that guy. You've seen the way I'm tatted? I don't like tattoos. Meaning what, they hurt. I'm halfway finished, uh, about a third finished with my new tattoo on my neck. I had to leave because that shit was fucking me up. If you don't, haven't got that, you don't know what the fuck that is. That is another level shit, right? This was last night. Look on Instagram. I'm extreme. And so I say, if you're in a fucking relationship, it's real important. You know why? Have you ever been in a relationship and there was an argument or a fight and you couldn't eat, you couldn't sleep, you couldn't do nothing? Your job suffered, your health suffered when you broke up. Your friendship suffered. Yes, yes, okay. Have you ever experienced this? You're feeling down, you have no energy, and then you fall in love with somebody, and you're like, whoa. You're running off an hour and a half of sleep with full energy, right? Your metabolism kicks in, your skin gets better, and you, you, you fucking swear, you swear the fucking birds are singing to you in the morning, right? It's like, I'm in love. Yeah, and that day you do a great job at your work. You sell the most things. He will reach out to you. You become attractive. Have you noticed that? Suddenly everyone's looking at you. You're like, isn't it weird when you're in a relationship, people look at you when you're not? Because when you're in a relationship, you feel good. So you walk around feeling good in the environment. So you get good feelings back. And when you're not in one, you feel bad. So you go around bad energies. And the world is nothing more than a mirror responding to your frequencies and energies. Seven laws of alchemy, because I'm also an alchemist. The second law of alchemy is 
uh, as above, so below. What is it? Third is vibration. It's a frequency universe. And Tesla himself said, if you want to decode this language of the universe, think in frequencies, energies, and uh, vibrations. So that's what I'm telling you. When you feel good, you have a different vibration. And so it attracts good, vib good vibes. Good vibes. Right? Good vibes only. Babe. Good vibes. So the first thing we have to do is make a relationship important. So I want you in your mind to think one through 10, how important is it? And I'm going to give you the answer. Girls, it should be a 10. Anything less, you fucked up. Girls, I mean, uh, men, it should be nine. Nine. Your career, is, your career and your purpose, which is your career, just so you know, your purpose is your career. You can't have as a man your purpose and then your career. Do we just say your purpose? Like your fucking purpose, but then you have a career? The fuck is that? You, you misunderstood career or purpose, all right? So your purpose and your career must be one as a man. Now, that comes first. Relationship comes second for a man. For a woman, relationship comes first. Everything comes second. This is a fact. Now, how do, you, how do I know it's a fact? Again, those are my stats. And this is one of the basic laws I work with. Is that to my women, I, me, me, must be the most important thing in their entire universe. Okay? Two, in my universe, they have to be second most important thing. To my, to my purpose and career, okay? Why? Because my purpose and my career will take care of her. She takes your last name, right? Isn't that how we do it? Has everybody noticed that before, right? If, if her name is Sarah Jones and I'm Arash Debazar, I don't become Arash Jones. She becomes Sarah Debazar. That tells you something. That tells you something. And you know what else she does? Her dad's name, let's say, was fucking uh, Smith. So there's Sarah Smith. For 35, 40 years, she's been Sarah Smith. And then you fucking show up and you take her. And after 40 years, everyone knows her as Sarah Divazar. Well, there is some fucking loyalty to your family over there, bitch. <laughs> right? Sorry, dad. Honey, I don't think he's good for you, honey. He's only trying to fuck you. Dad, I love him, and I'm going to take his last name. I'm going to have a fucking little baby, okay? That's what I'm doing, Dad, because he never understood anyways. Okay, bitch. So a woman takes on a man's name, right? How funny if a guy took on a girl's name. Wouldn't that be funny? Your, your buddy gets married and shit, right? He's like, oh, I'm so happy. Like what? You know, I've always, I've always been fucking uh, Brown, Dexter Brown, but now I'm Dexter Smith. Well, what do you mean? Well, she's a Smith. You, 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 you did what? You were part of that? What about, what about, what about your man? What about your, what about your, your family name? F fuck that, man. Wow, you're a bitch. Bizarre. Whoa, okay, cool. Right on. Go, 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 go attend the sisterhood traveling pants or whatever the fuck you're doing after this. Because uh, we can't talk anymore. Now, see, we all know, we all know this is the truth. Because when I say it, yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Okay, so, so as a woman, as a woman, does she want to be owned? Yes. However, maybe that word is not the right word. And that's what I was teaching today in my mentorship class, see? You know, one time, I turned to one of my girlfriends. I said, you know, I own you. And I got a negative feeling, even though she kept it straight and i tested it again i was like i own you I was like, did i did i perceive that right right let me try again let me put another quarter in this thing and then i i was sure i, I was right so i drove for about 30 seconds i said you have a problem with that word she goes well i said own she goes yeah i said what's the problem with that word he started telling me. I said, ah, that is a big problem. But that's not what I meant. <laughs> that's not what I meant. See, when a woman is owned, it's by her choice. She chooses to belong to somebody. She chooses to say, I'm his. I belong to him. I took his last name. So she's owned by choice, not by force. I said, and that's the greatest compliment that you could give to a man, that you belong to him. Right? What's the greatest compliment a man can get? 
I belong to him. What's the greatest compliment a woman could get? She's mine. You know how off you would be, girls, if a guy didn't do that? See, you haven't worked it out like this because there's a bunch of pussies around you. But if you were around a fucking table and then your man was treating you like, well, you know, she's, you know, she is real fucking stubborn headed. Ha ha ha. You know? Yeah. Hey, honey. Oh, was that John? Oh, yeah, you haven't seen him in three years. That was a big hug. I know. You know, I'm, I'm so glad that you guys saw each other. Oh, you're going you're gonna to visit him? After? Oh, okay. Is he still, he's not married anymore? Well, okay, yeah, yeah, have a good time, okay? What time are you going to be home? Oh, you don't know. Okay. Oh, I'll take care of the kids, honey. Okay. She's going around getting drunk with John, right? John confesses his love at 1.30 a.m. while they're in the fucking, they're in the bedroom or hotel that he's visiting. And she goes, I didn't know you felt like that. And she's touching the inside of his thigh saying, but I'm married looking deep in his eyes at 1.30 a.m. in the fucking hotel room, both drunk as shit. Cleavage hanging out, touching the inside of his thigh, flirting with him and saying, but you know, I'm married. I can't, I can't do anything. And, and John is, is, is fucking confused now. Like, is that a yes or a no? So John, being the man that he is, tries, and she kisses him for a little bit. He feels her titty, slips a finger in her pussy as he's taking her fucking out of her off. She's like, no, I can't, no, I can't. And then, and then they, they depart and it's awkward. And she got what she wanted. He didn't get what he wanted. And now she has a story. Huh. Get out of here. The, the, the highest compliment a woman can get is when a man says, she's mine. Okay? That's a huge compliment. Do you know why? Because if a king existed, a, a real king existed, and he said, that woman is mine, guess, guess what? Nobody in that empire will ever fuck with that woman. She can have everything she wants, and that would be the greatest compliment. Why? Because a woman can only be complimented in regards to what? Her status. Women only understand status, everybody. Here's the next big, big, big little piece for you. Everything equals status to a woman. Everything equals status to a woman. And if she believes your status is lower than hers, she's out the door. Right? If you're on Instagram, you can click the link in my bio and arrive here. It's all status. It's a game of status. Okay. <clears throat> so first and foremost, let's make these relationships really important, okay? Because you need to know that. Secondly, for the man, make it second most important. Make your purpose first most important. For women, are you ready? Somebody get me on Oprah. Let me, let me debate that woman. I don't know. She might be the fat Oprah or the skinny Oprah at that point. We don't know. To me, she's always been hot, just so you know. I like fat Oprah. I like skinny Oprah. Oprah was just that... Fat black girl that I would have had sex with at some point in my life, not knowing why. Maybe it's all the audience she had. I don't fucking know, to be honest. Is there any other man who's been watching Oprah their whole life and be like, I would fuck Oprah? Hello? Head nod over there. Yeah. She's kind of that weird, sexy ass fat girl. Right? Like, do you imagine what Oprah's tits look like? Can you imagine that? We never thought about that, huh? I mean, I never thought about it. It's the first time I'm thinking about it. You think they're firm? You think they're super dark on the tip? Huh? You think it's smooth? Triple D, quadruple F? What the fuck is she? Ginormous? Do you think her vagina smells? Do you think her, her body smells some, like some kind of lotion? What kind of Oprah? That's kind of creepy, right? We should stop. <laughs> Listen, if the girls were like, whoa, wait a second. Listen, girls, we were just getting started on the process of your best guy friend and you. <laughs> I was just running down what a guy does with a woman in his mind, okay? Shout out to Street Active from Los Angeles representing that real well. You see, 
to a woman. Okay, so here's what I was going to say. Here's what I was going to say. Are you ready? I'm, I'm proclaiming this shit. I'm, I'm putting this down on planet Earth. This is the Constitution, the Ten Commandments of a fucking relationship. Women, I need you to listen carefully. You, you, you have one purpose in life, and that purpose is your man. If you comply with what I said, you will understand why you, your relationship works, doesn't work, why you should be in one, why you shouldn't be, who you should be with. Your whole confusing mess is simply this. You are under the delusion that outside of your man exists some sort of purpose in life. Right? The surest way to turn off a real man is to go to him and tell him about your modeling career on the side or your fucking job whatever here and how fucking uh indonesia wants you to go over there and how you're now gonna save the turtles bitch why don't you save yourself and get with me before you save a fucking turtle save yourself bitch okay now of course when i say a man i mean a man right i don't mean like a, a, a male fucking gender we know a lot of male gender who are, who are bitches and pussies. We know them. They act like bitches and pussies. Okay? Any man fighting another man because his girl left him for that man is a pussy. <laughs> Doesn't want to be with you. You're going to go beat the guy up. Oh, yeah. That'll teach him. That'll teach her, too. She's running right back into your arms. Fuck out of here. Stupid ass. Am I even getting high? I don't know. I, I will know when I stand up. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, women. Your purpose, I'm, I'm teaching you. Your purpose is your man, okay? Now, men, listen, listen to what I'm telling you. Watch this. You get with a girl who you think is hot, right? Pick, pick your girl. Pick your fucking girl. Now, I want you to imagine something with me, okay? Girls, listen carefully as I create a man's fantasy. And if you want to know how to seduce any man to marry you, you must know what I know. Okay, listen. Pick your favorite girl, guys. Pick, pick some bitch you want to be with. Some bitch you're talking to or something, right? And now I want you to imagine this. She genuinely, come on, man, how do you fucking put this out? She genuinely, from, from like really though, when you look into her mind or when you see how she talks or how she posts or anything like that, she genuinely has the purpose to make your life, your purpose greater. Can you imagine the girl you like with that idea in her mind? I mean, let me ask you something. Is there anything you wouldn't do for that woman? Fuck. Because she is a part of you. Remember, Adam, supposedly, God took a rib out of him and made the woman. Okay? She's a part of him. She didn't go over there and do her own fucking thing. All right, Adam, nice catching you. I'm, I'm going to work on my modeling career. Uh, you know? Where, where is Eve? Oh, she's got this gig. <laughs> she's got a gig. What does that mean? Oh, no, she's on the other side of the fucking jungle or whatever with a bunch of strangers who have these cameras that you can buy. Just so you know, you, could, you, you actually don't even have to qualify to be behind these fucking things. And they're taking modeling pictures of her. Oh, that sounds comfortable, Adam. You, you okay with that? Yeah, I trust her. You know. Oh, yeah, you trust her? Tell her not to eat that apple. There's an apple. We're going to do a little test. You trust the bitch, right? Eve comes back, half-eaten apple. What the fuck? Adam goes, what the fuck, bitch? You ate the apple? She's like, yeah. What about it? I'm independent now. And he was like, you know, you fucking hoe. Anyways, I love Adam and Eve's story because it, like, it demonstrates everything I know about men and women, okay? <clears throat> All right. Women, your purpose is your man. Men, what are you supposed to do? You, you in the relationship must, must, get this, connect, connect her through you to something bigger, whatever that is. You is the secret. 
Secret of secrets, man. <laughs> I just thought about Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. You take her through connection with you and connect her to something bigger than you. This is the relationship. If you ever play what I call the boyfriend-girlfriend game, the cute marriage game, if you ever play that fucking game, you're gonna have the most boring life ever with her. What are you doing? Running the exact same storyline your uncle ran? And your uncle was a little cooler because back then, Bitches were bitches and hoes were hoes and men were men and this and that. But now our time, men are bitches and hoes and hoes are men and we don't know who's who. <laughs> like, who, who am I going to talk to? Everybody feels all alone and shit. I'm convinced 99% of the people listen to me because they feel like finally somebody gets them. That's it. Because I'm just speaking what the fuck everybody's thinking, but I put the words on it and I cut out the shit that's not necessary in my head. So it's easier to just hear the truth. Like, there it is. You all know what it is because as I was taught by a great man once, you know the truth already. How do I know you know? Because when I say it, you go, yeah, that's true. Well, how the fuck do you know it's true? You must know what true is. I mean, you can't recognize it unless you know it. Otherwise, Every time somebody talks, you'd be like, that's true, that's true. But you know it's not. You know it's not. And then a speaker like me shows up and says, you go, that's true. How do you know? Because you already know it. It's just been hiding somewhere. I dug it up and I lived it and go, oh, fuck, how'd you do that? I said, listen, this is how I do this. First and foremost, the way that our, our parents did relationships was a failure. You say, how do you know? I say, because look at what happened to the world. Shouldn't we change it? Everyone's divorced. And no one's happy when they're together. We can't do that. We got to change it up. You say, how do we do it? I say, I don't know. And then, then I start the experiment. Here we are. Okay, here's a rule for your relationships. This is part of the mentorship and diamond mind today. You and her, or you and him, must work out between you what certain terms mean, certain words. For example, what does cheating mean to you? What does cheating mean to you? Is giving a phone number cheating? Is kissing cheating? Is fucking cheating? Is sucking cheating? Is hanging out with one cheating? Is being in the same car cheating? Like, where do you draw, where, where is it that it, the boundaries are set clearly in the beginning? Now, do you know you, you should have that conversation? Why? Because if you don't have that conversation, you will have that fight. Because <laughs> it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen that you have a different definition of cheating than the other person. It's a fact. Here's one you must clear up with each other. Love. How does the other person feel love? It's not the same as you. I, I doubt it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, now watch this. Take your relationship, okay, and guard it, put a thing around it, against anybody who's not in that relationship. Okay? Listen. You have to be very aware of external influences. They're destroying your relationships without you knowing. You don't know who your man or woman is talking to. You don't know what they're saying. So. 
Close those down. Okay. You don't know what they're hearing. Okay. You have to guard against the outside the way you would guard a baby infant. Because when you get with somebody, you don't know anything about them. And you're going to try to build a life with them. Like you guys got to understand the absurdity of the logic of what I'm about to tell you. You meet a person who you feel a certain attraction for. Then you spend your days trying to convince them to be with you for the rest of your life when you don't even know them. There's such an intense emotion that comes out of us that you meet a total stranger and within months or, or even a year, <clears throat> you decide to convince them while they try to convince you to spend the rest of your life together. You don't know what their family is like. You don't know what, how she grew up. You don't know what, how she feels about different colored people. I mean, like, what are you going off of? Then the rest of your life, you spend time finding out all the shit you should have found out before you told the bitch, will you be with me for the rest of your life? And every time you find it, you go, fuck. Come on. The interview process for a relationship has to be much bigger. For both sides. Now, men, if you want women to fuck you much sooner and better, then interview them longer. Don't be so quick. Pretend like they're getting the greatest job they could ever get, which is what? To be part of your life. That is a job. It's a, it's a position. Bet you're interviewing for a position tonight. What is it? My second in command. <laughs> That's how you got to be talking. You know what I mean? That's how you are as a guy. You're not like, bitch, we're doing an interview tonight. It's like, what is it about? Um, the interview is about like, whether or not I'm good enough to fuck you. Well, 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 what did you say? No, no, no. Listen, bitch. We're doing an interview tonight. What's it for? To find out if you got what it takes to be second in command of the empire I'm creating. Uh, you're beautiful, so you already got something going for you. And that is what got your fucking application in the door. But now let's go through the application. Right? Are you loyal? I'm the most loyal bitch you ever know. Give me an example. Your last relationship, how many, how many months or years was it? She goes, oh, oh, I didn't know he's going that far. She's like, well, that was a diff that was a not a, a long one. That was like a year. Okay, but the one before that was four years. Oh, okay. But before that. Uh, it was like six months. Okay, how many dicks have been inside of you? Because you're talking in the last three years, there was three dicks in there. And you know it's funny these days, a lot of women are just like, three dicks in three years, that's not even anything. Two dicks in one lifetime is too much. How's that? Okay. What's, what's the limit for the girl? One dick. Unless you end up being some kind of evil fucking rapist something, then no, of course not. Okay. But if he was a dude that you liked and you wanted to get with and you chose to have him fuck you, then what happened? Oh, it didn't work out? Well, I'm sure it'll work out with the next one. So spread your legs again. Oh, it didn't work out? Well, I bet you get the third one right. How about never? How about you just listen to me from the beginning, okay? You're doing this whole fucking thing wrong. Let's start again. Let's start again. Sexuality, when done properly, is a common sense extension of energetic exchange between two individuals in that moment. Now, don't ask me to repeat that. It's a natural progression. Sexuality is a natural progression of the energy exchange on a physical level between two individuals, which results in 
a closer and closer, closer contact between their two bodies to a point where their bodies have to join as one. Now, those are beautiful. You're all rushing the most important decision of your life, who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. This is not a rushed interview. Jess, just tell Hannah to hurry up and let's get in the car and come now. Okay. Here's a question for you, men and women. If you're a man, who was your role model or role models growing up on how to be a man in relation to women? Keep that in mind. Women, if you're a woman growing up, who was your role model of how to be a woman to a man growing up or who were they? Take a look at them, please, if you've never looked at them. Where did you get your ideas from when it came to the opposite sex? Who were the role models? Who are the older people putting it down for you? Will I look at mine? Let me see. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely a mentorship missing in that one. <laughs> there was definitely like a lot of missing conversations. A lot of do's and don'ts, a lot of like, this might be important to you growing up because you might notice that your dick will be the radar of your life for the rest of your life. So let's fucking talk about this thing, son, for just a second. Okay. You see your mom. She's absolutely beautiful. She's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. See you beautiful children. But son, if I could do it again, I would never marry her. Wait, what? Son, I'm telling you something every father should have told you. I would have still been fucking her, but I wouldn't have married her. Well, dad, you don't love mom? No, son. I love your mom. But I love her so much that I hate her now. Because she is the reason why I didn't fuck Jenny, Jan uh, Janet, J Joyce, fucking Sandy, Susan. And son, right now it doesn't make sense to you. But one day, remember those names of what I said. Know the sacrifice I made. Dang, dad. I thought you guys were happy. Son, no man's happy when they're married. Whoa, dad. I think you're old enough now. You've hit three. You need to know these things. <laughs> Kids crying in the other room. Mario, wait, 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 you, 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 you killed dad. You killed dad. Dad's going to die because of you. What did you say to our son? Nothing. Your son is just acting up because he doesn't, he's, he's too little to understand the truth. You better tell me. You better tell me. And then you turn to your son, you wink, and you go, Okay, honey, what do you want me to tell you? How important is communication in your relationships? It is the, the life of it. Okay? It's the life of your relationship. It's communication. You must learn to communicate. Right? And it's not that difficult. People think it's difficult. It's not. It's basically whatever is inside of you. Learn to put words behind it and put it out. That's it. Okay? So, for example, if I go, hmm, I feel a little bit fat right now, a little sloppy, a little bit of a pain in my heart, and my eyes are heavy, but I feel good overall in a sense spiritually. All I did is just look at inside of me and explain to you what I was seeing. That's how you communicate. Okay? You look in and then you speak out. Simple. So how important is communication in your relationship? My God, it's everything, though. It's everything. Though. Because it's only through communication that you get to find things out that you need to find out about the other person. And your job in a relationship is simply this. 
Find out who you're sleeping with. You think you know them. Okay? Do you know why I know that you don't know them? Here's why. Because you are also them. That means if I asked you, do you feel your partner has taken the time to get to know who you really are? The answer is no. So now your partner would say that about you. That's how I know. Because the answer would be shared by everybody. <laughs> the same answer, then that means, that means that's the situation here, right? If both sides are dealing with it. Mm-hmm. So communication is that thing that your relationship is basically counting on, okay? It's counting on communication. So how do you determine what and how your communication should be with the other person? Well, you find out about who they are as much as you can. Yesterday or day before, I don't remember. One of these days I was walking and somebody was walking with me. And I'm, I got to try to remember why somebody was walking with me. Uh, maybe it was a girlfriend that was walking with me. That was a guy. No, it was a girlfriend, I think. I'm walking and this black man and black woman walked past me. As we were walking, they were walking. And there was an interaction between the guy and I with our eyes at first. Right? Kind of checked each other out for a minute. As we, were past, as we passed each other, we head nodded, and he said something like, uh, what's up, or whatever, and I returned it with something like, what up, dog? And then we kept going. But prior to that, I was talking like this, then I spoke a different language, then I came back and I said to her, now imagine if that was two older white couple, older, and like their little fucking uh, older outfits. I said, if they walked by, I would have, most likely been pleasant day or a great day. Hello, nice to see you. I said, and that would be right for that, and that would be right for that, and people have to learn how to speak the language of the people they're talking to. Now, if you arrive to new land, it's your job to learn their language. Don't force your language on them. I mean, unless you have enough artillery, right? Then you can do whatever the fuck you want. But since that's not the case, and it's not going to work out right now, then what you got to do is learn to communicate. All right? That becomes your artillery. You arrive to a new relationship. Your job is to find out the customs of, and, and etiquette of that relationship prior to you getting there. Prior to you getting there, there was life on that land. Do you remember? You became Christopher Columbus. You fucking arrived, and there was people there. And you discovered it. Yes, you did. For the Spaniards, you discovered it. Absolutely. They didn't know it was there. Then you discovered it for them. That's not a problem. You arrive at the doorstep of a new relationship. It could be a, um, a business relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be a romantic I don't care what it is. You arrive. You need to learn the customs of the people, their traditions, their speech, what about their fears? Do they have superstitions? Do you know, do you know the superstitions of the people you, you're with? Okay. Every single thing you'd ever want to know from landing on a tribal place to find from those people is the same idea that you want to know about the person you're trying to get with. Like literally that. That you just go back and forth. You want to learn the customs of the people. Now, just like just like Christopher Columbus came here and now I'm sitting in front of a computer and me personally, I don't know how you feel about it. I love nature. I'm a nature walker. But if I had a choice to have an Apple computer in front of me with an air conditioner in this room or to sit in the fucking outside and worship tree spirits, I'm going to choose this one. So shout out to Christopher Columbus. Okay? Which is what I'm about to tell you. If you arrive on that person's land and you could improve its technology or culture, 
Well, how do you know it improved? If it improved the quality of life, it improved it. That's all there is to it. Okay? That's how you know if it's improved. Okay? You don't know what you got until you don't got it. So why don't you all go camping for a week and come back and tell me how you, much you appreciate your hot water again. Okay? Let's not forget. Go cook some shit on a fucking fire for a little bit. Go hug some fucking trees, which I do that, but then I also have a fucking nice house. Okay? That's the, I have, there's a balance here. So you can bitch all day long about technology, but your ass couldn't last 10 minutes without technology, right? Isn't it technology just really fuck things up for humanity, didn't it? While they're like Googling and Facebooking and Instagramming and you know what I mean? No, it didn't fuck things up for humanity. Humanity's living longer than they ever have. How the fuck did we get fucked up? What are you judging it based on? Oh, but... People are so fucked up these days. Go back to Rome. You want to try that place? Huh? Where gladiators were killing each other at the height of civil, civilized planet, right? Rome was a civilized world. Remember. But there were gladiators killing each other. You're telling me that's civilized? You have a wrong definition. Okay. That's savage. And savage is cool for what? For music? For your dog as a protection dog against somebody? For you as a fighter or somebody engaged in a life and death situation, you should be savage. But outside of that, the word savage should not be used by you, for you, by you, your child, or anything else any longer. Okay? Savage is, is, is an uncivilized, out of control creature. And if there's a time and place to be that, right? You're about to get jumped by three guys who are not going to hesitate to fuck you up. You need to be a fucking savage right there. And they need to know you're about to be a savage. You don't want to be civilized. And let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Okay. Hold on. Wait, wait, let me go. Oh, I got an idea. Hold on. Wait a second. Wait, don't throw the punch in. Wait a second. That's not going to work. Got to savage out on those motherfuckers like they've never seen before. Okay. So well, you want to have the, the, uh, the understanding that your communication going back and forth, is designed to do two things. One, watch this, you use your communication to pull information. Pull meaning grab and bring to you. How you do that? You use questions, right? Questions, but not regular questions. I'll, I'll help you out today. I'll, I'll give you guys a little, you know, I wanted to lecture a little bit longer today. So your questions... Ooh. Instagram died. Hold on. <sighs> live. Okay, live again. Your communication either pulls information to you, like extracts, or pushes formations of life into the world. And your communication is either stating something or asking for something. There's no, can you do anything else? You're either making a statement or, you, or a statement is this is what is, or you're withdrawing information from the environment. That's the power of the communication. When you enter a new land, if you want to do it properly, now I come from a land of assassins and ninjas and that's my time shout out to you sir welcome and when you enter a new land you want recon you want your fucking people to tell you all about it you want to know the customs of the people what they like why they don't like their superstitious everything what god they worship who the, who their heroes are who their celebrity every the more you know the more you could infiltrate the fucking place now that's what a relationship is. You're infiltrating another human being's world. But here's the difference. They're allowing you to. They've granted access to, to you. You've arrived and they've said, you know what? I like you too. So now roam freely and ask about what you see. And you start walking into their mind and you go that. She goes, I don't want to talk about that. You need to note that. Great. Not today, but eventually, of course. You go over here. She starts talking about this. She starts talking about it. You're walking through her mind maze. You need to map it out. 
and she needs to know how you think. But it's more important that you know how she thinks. In fact, for you, girl, it's more important that you know how he thinks because that's what a pure relationship looks like. It's a student-teacher relationship. If I go to my teacher, my goal and desire is to what? Absorb his information or formation. It's my job. His job is what? To pour out the formation to me. Now, we can't switch because it'll fuck things up. Suddenly, I start telling my mentor, well, I don't think that's right. Um, I know, you know, why well, there's an argument ensues. There's no argument in that relationship. Just like in a proper relationship between a man and a woman, there is no argument. Because when there's a hierarchy, you don't argue. You present your case and you ask for approval or you get judgment calls or you figure out ways to, to create new policies. But you don't argue with someone who has rank over you. Right? And this is where we come to a very key, key idea. Men and women are not equal. Not in the face of God, not in the face of nature, not in the face of Jesus, not in the face of Muhammad, not in the face of Buddha. Where are you getting your fucking idea from? Who told you men and women were equal? None of your teachers did. Who told you men and women were equal? Cite your fucking source if you're going to say some shit that's stupid. What was it, an advertisement by a feminist group? Who has the sole desire to destroy women? Thus they're feminists. You must challenge this idea every single day. Men and women are not equal. They are different. Is an apple and an orange equal? In mathematics, it tells you you can't do that. An apple can never equal an orange. And a man can never equal a woman or otherwise. So each has their strengths and weaknesses in their respective roles. There's a female role, there's a male role. How is it determined? Based on survival, based on our tribe existing longer than that tribe. So bitch, here is what happens here in this tribe. That sword, that spear, that shield, don't touch it unless someone breaks into here, then grab it and stab. Me and the boys are going out there using those things. And we're going to come back with some food and some enemy heads. Got it? I may not come back today, but if I do come back after what I've done, don't let me walk back and it looks like you did nothing here. Don't make it look to me as a tribal warrior coming back from a day's work, that while I was gone for five hours risking my life, you did nothing here. So figure out what to do when I'm gone. You come back, look, we have this little pot, I made a tree out of it. I cleaned this, I built that, I gathered some nuts just in case we don't have food. Damn, you're a good woman. I tell you what, when your daughter's born, teach her that. Man comes back, he's got the food, he's got the meat, his morale is high, feeling good with the boys. They're singing and cheering and dancing and drinking all night around the fire. This is a good tribe to belong to. Now we're going to switch roles. The women grab, three women grab the spears because we're all equal. And the tribesmen go, you're not coming, what, what are you doing? Well, I should have a right to hunt too. Bitch, this is not a joke. This is not a video game. Put the spear down. Not only are you in danger, I'm in danger with you and holding that shit. Okay? No. Well. Well, what else you got going on? What else do you want to do? Why do you do what you're good at? And I'll do what I'm good at so we can survive instead of you trying to like, what are you doing? I didn't even get you. You grabbed a fucking spear? 
because you love weapons too? We're trying to live. Okay. So men and women are not equal. And if someone tells you, say, who told you that? How do you know? Cite your sources. And if they go, well, I just know it's obvious. They say, it's not obvious to me. And you're not smarter than me. That's for fucking sure. If it's obvious, it must be obvious to me. And it's not. And I know I'm not a fucking dumbass. So where are you getting your idea from? Because I'll give you all my sources. But after two, you must present one. And you go, is that a cross on your neck? Great. So my first source is the Bible. Do I need to give you something greater than your own holy book? Or are you going to give me one of these? Well, not everything in the Bible is true. Okay, priest. Now, where did you get your idea from that we're equal? Who told you that? Oh, your best friend who's trying to make you break up with your ex-boyfriend? Good advice. Do you also go take advice from bums about money and fat people from training? Is that how you fucking get advice, right? You get advice on how to be black from a white man and how to be white from a black man? Does it, are you that backwards in your fucking head? What are you talking about? Men and women are equal. In whose eyes, you fuck? Based on what? Based on shaming me if I say otherwise? Once again, men and women are not equal in any way, shape, or form. If you think they are, you provide the proof because the proof exists that you're not equal. Okay? Stating something a thousand times doesn't make it true, but providing evidence does. Provide some fucking evidence. All right? Provide some fucking evidence for your fucking bullshit. Now, obviously, when I say this, a lot of people agree with me. Then you go around and you pull this bullshit. I'm teaching you now diamond mine shit. Then you go around and you pull this shit. You agree with me, you see a bunch of other people agreeing with me, you watch my shit blow up, and then you pull this and you go, well, you know, not everybody agrees with him, or you may not agree with him. Why would you say that? Everybody with half an intelligence will agree with me. Because that's what's going on. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not like, it's not like my law, it's like, hey, did you guys, did everybody observe that men wanna fuck other women? Huh? Did, any, did anybody, Aaron, any man on planet Earth be so, before I came around realize that all men cheat when they get a fucking chance with a hot girl? Oh. Don't be mad at me. That's what's going on. Now, me knowing that's what's going on, I'd rather no longer pretend like it's not and figure out how I could be fulfilled and my girlfriend's fulfilled if that's the case. Because God made it. Nature, evolution, whatever you believe in doesn't matter. Okay, men and women are not fucking equal. We have our own roles. We have our own jobs. Now, here's the problem. As I have two girlfriends that are single mothers. Now, I don't know if you still be considered a single fucking mother if I'm in the picture. Now, that's something I need to look at later. If it just came to me right now. However, the single mother needs to be mom and dad. Why? Because that's what it takes to raise a child. Okay? And the single father has to be mom and dad. Why? Because that's what it fucking takes to raise a fucking child. Okay? How do you know that? Because nature made it so man and woman have to be together to have a baby. And nature made it that the woman couldn't recover right away, so the man had to stick around. Make sure she's safe and shit. Right? What do you mean? Of course it's supposed to be like that. I mean, that's, that's what the code says. Whether I like it or not, maybe I don't agree with it, I don't agree with it, but that's what it is. We're not seahorses and shit. We don't give birth to our own fucking thing and then they just start as adults. How cool if next life you just start as an adult, but in a baby body, right? Just come out like, fuck this. Whoa, mom. Okay, dad, I just want to tell you something. Okay. I, I don't, don't listen to what the fuck she says. All right. There's definitely two other penises that weren't there the other day. I definitely, I, I, dad, I know you're dickhead. And th there was some other one. Okay, I don't know what it was. It was, it was thin, it was small, but it was something. Okay? For a second, I thought it was a Lego piece that was stuck in there. Imagine, come back saying all kinds of shit, right? Hearing all kinds of shit. You come out with a list. I would come out with a list of all the people that fucked with my mom and dad when I was in there. I'd come out first thing and be like, okay, 
All right, who, who, who's this fucking bitch, Jennifer? Huh? At one party, you remember her? She was like, she bumped into your belly. Let me see what that looks like. You got a picture? All right, we're going down, bitch. You fucking, I don't care. What's I turn two? I start walking. I'm fucking you up. I'm going to bite you so hard in a party. Where's that at? Yeah. Start plotting revenge as a baby. Wouldn't that be cool? As a baby, you could get away with all kinds of shit. You literally shit in their food when they're not watching. Eh, ooga, ah, ooga, ah. And you just smear it in their food. But then you can speak. So when you come back, you tell the whole family, yeah, you don't even believe this shit. I shit in their food. And I, and I have my cousin recorded, huh, cuz? Oh, shit, I'm falling. I still can't get my legs right. Oh, hold on. Someone can lift me up. Lift me up. Okay, okay. Put a pillow. Okay. 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 Show that video. Show that video when I shit on him. Yeah, uh-huh. Life will be fun. Having our fucking awareness and being able to talk. But now we got to start all over again, right? Ramona says an apple can't even equal another apple because they operate in different spaces and time. You're absolutely right. This is the flaw of mathematics, by the way. I learned that from Alvin Hubbard. That one can never equal one. Nothing can ever equal anything in the universe except it can equal to itself. And when it does, it nullifies itself. Okay? Now, that's very cool, but it has nothing to do with what we're doing. Okay. We're good? We still continue? Programming? Yeah. Okay. Picture on the wall is Ganesh. He's an Indian god. Look it up. Okay. Men. Advice for men. Start to fall in love with the mating ritual again. Like, get excited about seducing her. Right? Get excited about, like, whatever the fuck it is to try to win her over. Like, be okay with that. Be okay being the guy who's going to win the girl over. Right? Like, don't be too cool to play that game. Be so cool that you can play that game unattached like I do. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun seducing a fucking girl. You know? It's a, it's, a fun, it's a fun event that takes place to not know somebody and approach them and take them, then get them to fucking text you, then call you, then meet up with you. You know, like, wow, you fucking died. Well, what'd you do? And it sounds impossible, right? So hold on. You went somewhere. You saw this fine bitch, everybody you wanted. You approached her as a stranger from another tribe in a place where it was so fucking loud and shit. She then laughed and danced with you. Then gave you a way to contact her. Then you contacted she contacted you back. Then you got on the phone, and now she's meeting you. Are you a wizard? Right? But that's just, we haven't even started. Then you meet up with her. And now what? You know? What, what, do you look forward to that moment when you pick her up or meet her somewhere. What do you do that first moment? I had a crush on Daisy De La Hoya. You guys remember Daisy De La Hoya from uh, Rock of Love, VH1? Right? She's my friend now. But I remember the first time I picked up Daisy from uh, the airport. Hey, Christian, if you could cut this out for me, that would be great. I'm going to give it to Daisy, if you can hear this part. Daisy, there's a story about Daisy. Daisy De La Hoya, my dear friend and beautiful friend. I had to go pick her up from the fucking San Jose airport. I had a huge crush on her, right? What? I'm like, the drive. I was like, what music do I listen to? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you, Ramona looks like you've had that issue before in your life with that smile, like, what's the best song, first of all, for me right now, so I can get in the right zone? Secondly, you try to pick out the music before she gets in the car. Like, what's going to be the right song? So that's going through my head. Then I arrive, and then I get out, and now you immediately wonder if you're good-looking enough. And then that walk is so slow. It's fucked up. So then I go, I go, I'm in the airport, I go on the fucking escalator, and now I have to stand and wait for her to fucking walk out. Now, I had never seen this woman before live. I've only seen her on TV. And I didn't know what the fuck I was going to be looking at when she walked out, right? I mean, I, I expected she would look like the fucking movie, whatever the fuck the TV show was. So I'm waiting, and I see somebody, and my heart goes, boom. And it's not her. And then I'm happy, and I'm sad. And people keep going, and I start thinking, what if she didn't make it? Right? I go, oh, no. And then I saw her as she was walking up. It's a cute little thing. And, of course, the first moment of hello, then what do you say as you go down the escalator? 
Then what do you say when you grab the bags? Then the right. Oh, the girls are here. But is he gonna be here? Is he gonna be here then? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's continue. We want to once again enjoy this process. If you guys are on Instagram, click the link in the bio and arrive here, okay? Said, so just like to say game or die and goddamn. I just, oh, I like, uh, brother, it's fire. Yeah, that's my product, game or die. I told you. What you don't know is I'm doing a game or die boot camp in two months and I'm getting signups like within a week and you guys will see. You have whatever you want, everything's available for you. Everything? Not my dick. What else you got going on? Not my dick. Well, you have to be clear. I just said, not my dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but can you focus as I'm talking? Because that's why you guys to distract me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Get fall in love with the process of seducing. Because, why? It teaches you so much about you. You have to confront yourself as a man in a way you will never confront yourself. See, you might be able to get tough with a guy to resolve your issues or ignore him because you don't care about him. But you can't get tough with a girl to resolve your issues and you can't get rid of her because you're falling in love with her. What are you going to do? So now what's your strategy, my friend? How do you resolve that fucking problem? Oh, but now she's got something else on you. She could now turn from you and make any man in your life her target and he'll probably go for her if she's fine. This is going to test your, your friendships. Then at some point you and her are going to have a fight or an argument or a breakup. How is she going to act afterwards? Because she's probably going to try to destroy your reputation. I can vouch for you, all exes. How do you deal with that situation? So this thing gets you really strong, okay? A different kind of strength. You know how they're like, he's got man strength. Have you heard that? Or he's got retard strength. Like retarded people are hella strong. That's you? Jessica. Jessica's retarded and she's very strong. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. Yeah. But this, this gives you a different kind of strength. Look, I was reading this book, right? It's called Monster. Um, the Autobiography of a Gang Member, Monster Cody. Okay, that's the book. It's one of my favorite books. And this is a real gangster writing this book. And he says, he's talking about that mad dog stare that you give people. And how he perfected it at some point where he would roll up and every light he would just like, just, you know, mad dog until, until people turned around. And later on he refers to another face called the mask. And he goes, the mask is the mad dog face extended longer and right before you go to war. Like you're gonna fight, that's the face, the mask. You put on the mask, right? And he said something. He said, these looks, it's not just the way you look on your face. He says, people can see something in your eyes based on how much you put in into the game. All the experiences you've had, you could see it when you look at somebody and you know if you have to look away or not, right? Okay, perfect. It's the same thing when it comes to women. When they look at me or hear two sentences out of my mouth, they can feel this is a motherfucking guy that can get them. This is that fucking guy. You can't hide it. Your experience shows in you. Your life shows in you. I'm telling you that because if you want to be good at something, you want to accumulate lots of experiences in that thing. And that means a lot of mistakes. 
I'm a very good speaker because I've been speaking for a long time, but I bet you I've made more mistakes than everybody else. Because if you just think within the last two weeks, how many hours I've been in front of the camera talking, it's probably longer than you have, unless you're a professional speaker. So just in the last two weeks, but I've been doing this for fucking year, too many years to even count. I just threw up. There, there's the fucking uh, peanut butter. Shit. I thought it was going to burp. That was not a burp. <laughs> how many have you had today? Two so far. Okay. Looking at the night, it may end at two, or at the end of the night, it may be like suddenly four or five. Okay. All right. Gonna, I'm going to take some questions a little bit. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to take some questions. Okay. It's 529. Oh, yeah. Okay. So how do you, I mean, it sounds hopeless, these relationships. And I'm going to be the first to tell you, these relationships are hopeless. Rihanna said it best, right? We found love in a hopeless place. And then she repeats it. We found love in a hopeless place, right? These relationships are hopeless, okay? So if you want them to work, you have to value them and you gotta go after them the way you go after like a black belt in martial arts or a law, law degree or you, like you have to study your relationship. You have, to, you have to practice your relationship. You gotta fucking... Uh, involve yourself in it, explore it, fucking break down a thousand times, recreate yourself a thousand times because that's actually how you run a relationship, right? Because I asked you, I said, where did you get your idea of, of a uh, relationship from? And you thought back, they weren't successful. I'm telling you mine, it's successful. It's so successful that other women watching it still want to be part of it knowing that they'll be girlfriend six, seven, eight. That tells you how successful the, the strategy of the relationship I have is. Do you understand? Listen carefully. You got one girlfriend. You're running this strategy of survival with her. You're living this life. Another girl comes in and sees it. You're right along for the ride. She's in. A third girl sees it. A fourth girl sees it. Then what, what's going on? You must got something going on. So this, I'm telling you, is, is, is the answer. Is you got to approach it the way you approach the master's degree are better. And you, you go in it and you fucking work on it. Nobody knows how to do a relationship, including me. I'm just further on the path. And I make mistakes every single fucking day. How could I not I have five girlfriends? Don't you make a mistake with your girlfriend every day? If you talk, you don't make any mistakes if you don't talk, right? Like to some degree, it's a blessing that I don't see Cristalia and, and gold that much. Why? Because we're not around each other enough to fucking just be upset all the time. But then there's the negative side of it. I wish I was. So now what do you do? Well, you do what I always do. You say, fuck it. That's what it is. Okay. You go and you work these relationships out. Okay. Take out every and any if you can. It's not going to be possible, but that's the goal. The goal is to take out any and all negativity between you and your relationship other. <coughs> See that? The world will add the negativity for it, you. You cannot be the one who adds negativity. You may be accidentally more than once. However, you have to understand the law and fix it every time. Okay? You, you, that's man and woman, have to be the source of positivity in the relationship. Next, men, you must, must have a total knowledge and control un until she's not your girl, but as long as she is. Total knowledge and control of every communication line between your woman and another man.
if your girl is fine, which we're just gonna assume she is, okay? And you and I know the reason for that. Because that communication line is literally being used against you behind your back by that guy. So she has invited into your relationship somebody who wants to talk to her, gets to talk to her for whatever reason, who if he had his way, he would take your girl and you wouldn't have her. That's the person talking to your girl. If she's fine. Now, none of this water. Now, none of this should ever be argued about. Because there should be no arguing in a relationship. And I'll tell you why there should be no arguing. There should be roles. For example, the role of a man is to lead and make decisions. The final call is with the man. Okay? Let me cite my sources. The Quran, the Bible, Buddhist texts from way back in time, and evolution, nature. Pick your fucking God. Okay? That's my source for telling you that the man must make the final decision for the household. Okay? Now, what's yours when you think he shouldn't? Your own insecurity? Your own ignorance? Your own stupidity? Who did you listen to? If you claim Allah or, or, or Buddha or, or Jesus, then, then you go to your holy books and it will tell you. And if you go, enough, I'm not religious. Then nature, you want to see evolution? Go look at it. It'll tell you. The man leads. Okay. So there is no arguing. I hate arguing with these girls. I don't want to argue. They get me going for maybe two or three and then I catch it. Hopefully one day I'll catch it before two or three. There's no arguing. There's the door and then there is following. There's the door and there's following. Why? Because we're on a ship. And I'm the captain of this ship. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I'm going to tell you some facts that you could look up. You could Google it right now live to see I'm not fucking with you. On earth, if you're the captain of a ship, once the ship goes out, you, are, you have total authority over that ship, meaning you could imprison people, even execute them. You have a right to take out your gun and shoot somebody and explain it as that person was unsafe for the ship and it was gonna go down. And you would be okay in a court of law. A captain has total authority on a ship. And if you've ever been on a ship, watch when the captain walks up, how people respect him because he's God of that ship. Got that? Okay, good. That captain is running that ship. It's going somewhere. He knows the dangers. He, he's, he's older in that sea area. That's why the woman should not be older than the man. If you guys are in relationships and your girl's older than you, I, I don't think you're going to last. Okay? You're violating a major code. I mean, you can last, but you better be hella good. I was with, uh, with a girlfriend who was older than me before. I mean, I would do it now, but it would only be because I have like a bunch of girlfriends. But it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a one-on-one, -on -one, she's older than you. That's not going to work. It would be okay if you had more than one girlfriend. No, it would have to be more than, it would have to be more than two, actually. If one's older, one then it's not gonna work. Okay. So in a relationship, there is no arguing. There's leading and following or changing commanders, which means out the door. Okay. So it's a responsibility of a woman to pick the man that she wants to follow, and it's a responsibility of the man to lead so she follows and not get into a dispute about it. Any dispute is settled like this, there's the door. Why? Because I'm the captain of my ship. That's why. And the safety of the crew and the passengers of this ship is under my fucking command. And so is the sinking of this fucking ship. So since you're arguing with the fucking captain, you need to leave.
Because guess what's not happening? The ocean is not going to change. The sun and the air is not going to change. And the way that I'm going to navigate this shit based on that isn't going to change. So life isn't going to change. And the way that I've devised my life and what I'm doing ain't going to change. So you're going to have to go. There's a bunch of ships over there. Good luck to you. You have to get rid of the idea of arguing. And it goes like, well, what if, what if he's wrong? What if he's wrong? How many times is he going to be wrong before you tell him, if you're wrong again, I'm going to leave you? You have a right as a woman to say that. Why? Because you're giving yourself to him. <laughs> That's why. Now, you don't have a right to say that if you don't give yourself to him. Right? You're holding back, holding back, holding back, one foot out the door. Don't say shit to me, bitch. You give me all of you? Okay, now you have a right to leave if I don't lead right. No problem. The other way, you weren't even here. Fuck out of here. Okay, two more. One, there's a vibe to your relationship. Do you know the vibe? When it's down, when it's not good vibe, you know that feeling, right? And the vibe is good, you know that feeling? You know when it's bad? You know when it's bad and you feel like it's bad? It's bad. You need to do something. You need to do something about it. And if the person's like, it's not bad, it's not bad, well, then it's about to be bad. Why? Because I'm pissed now. Well, there's nothing to be pissed about. Well, then now let's argue about that. You see? The vibe is bad now. So you have a fucking choice. You can help me understand why this fucking nastiness is here, or we're gonna, I'm going to show you my nastiness with this nastiness that's in the air. It's not mine. And that's how I operate. I pray like this. If you have a problem, tell me. But do it respectfully. But if I catch the problem you haven't spoken, I have a double problem with you. Because I feel like you're, you're a hypocrite. We're moving forward and you're not forward yet. Don't do that shit. I forgot I was going to give you three, but I'll give you one. That's good enough. Okay, if you have any questions, go ahead and type it. I'll take some questions. If you're on Instagram, click the link and come here. Andra, should her lifestyle naturally change through her submission to a man? And if it doesn't, how does he change her attitude without force and resistance? Should her lifestyle naturally change through her submission to the man? I mean, how, could, you, could it not change if she submitted? How? How would it not change? I can't imagine that. And if it doesn't, how, how, if you submit to a man completely, how does your life not change? It must. And if it doesn't, how does he change her? Oh, so basically, look at Here's what the question actually says. Let's read sacred syntax, okay? As I'm teaching my top students right now, the mentorship. Here's what the question reads, okay? This is what it actually is trying to say. I have not fully submitted to my man. How does he get me to submit? And if he's capable of doing that, should I change my lifestyle? Okay, that's the question. So now everybody read that question and understand what I just saw. And that's what you need to be able to do. You need to decode what the fuck people are saying. And my answer is simple to you. If your man knew what he was doing, you wouldn't ask that question or even be on this lecture without him. What is your morning ritual right now, teacher? Uh, get up, check the phone, read a little bit. Um, go and either, depending where I'm sleeping that night, say hi to the, everybody else. And then go shower. And then shower, I do my, you know, breathing and um, affirmations and check my state. Like, I use the shower to, 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 to do this. First, I, I check here. I do a little reading just to make sure I know I'm a spiritual being. And then I go greet everybody. Greeting is important. Make sure everyone's up and doing all right. Then shower. That's the practice. It's in the shower. How, like, what is an indicator that she is starting to submit? And what is an indicator that she has fully submitted? She softens when she talks to you and she cares about your feelings. Like if she does something you look like you disapprove, it's, a, it's important to her. Right? She'll start to cut off things in her life that you're not okay with without you saying anything. 
Like that's where you want to go. That's the proper. I'm, I'm, I've now, and I've now accomplished what I just said. Okay, and it was a new accomplishment in my relationships. The things that I didn't want are not there right now. But I didn't have to ask anymore. So I saw a, a natural progression of my girlfriend suddenly by herself, step by step, start to cut things out and put things in that I was looking for. Because I had decided on something. I wanted to see something. You know, these are, these are relationships, but also experiments. Uh, naturally, I'm trying to figure life out. Right? Okay. So that, that takes a lot, lot longer process. And it takes a lot of care. It's like, I mean, you, if you could do that, what I'm saying, then you got it. When you get a person where they start thinking with you in a way that your feelings matter without you having to say a word. That matters, right? After what time in your mating do you invest your resources into her mating ritual? I right away. If she's going to come out with me, the food and drinks is on me. Simple. Now, if you can't afford it, then don't do food and drinks. Go to the park or go on a hike or go run or fucking go to the gym. Okay? But if she's hanging out with me, I'm paying. Okay? Now, it's my choice if I'm going to hang out with her two or three times and, you know, she's still trying to hold her vagina to her own self or whatever the fuck she's doing, right? then I can decide and I can go on for, you know, a year, two years. It doesn't matter. It depends on how I feel about the girl, right? If she's worth it, then sex doesn't matter. If she's not worth it, then it's only about sex. And that's how you know, by the way, girls. Okay? That's how you know. If you're worth it, sex doesn't matter as much, as much. In the beginning, later, it doesn't matter. If, if you're important, it doesn't matter. But if you're not, then you're only about sex. But if you're only about sex, then you can be replaced much faster than you think. Okay? Your pussy will get old. A younger, hotter girl will arrive. You don't want to bank on that one. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, anything else? You're welcome. All right. You have a question? No. Okay. Um, do girls that already have BFs only want sex or more? No, 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 no. They don't think like that. Rarely do they think like that. Very few girls are walking around looking for dick like that because they can get it if they're hot, right? No, they're looking for an escape from their relationship because the relationship sucks. They want a man to come around and take their bullshit away from them. That's all they're doing. They're doing nothing else. Okay. Reason I asked the brother... Is that I sometimes, oh, I thought you were a female, Andra. I was, I, was, I was interpreting that as a female question. I wouldn't have interpreted it like that. Let me see what you're saying now. Now I got right before you said the brother, I know. The reason I asked brother is that I sometimes feel resistance when changing her mindset. I wonder how to do it. Okay, okay. Totally different interpretation if it's a man. <laughs> what? There's a great interpretation. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> You have to show her through your dates and quotes that you care about her. Once you're going out, it changes. If you want to do what I'm doing, no one, people aren't doing this. I'm telling you, it becomes a matter of demonstrating that you care genuinely. <laughs> Not care because you want to fuck her. That's a different flavor of care. It feels different to the system. There's a different kind of care, which says, outside of your vagina, I still care about you. If you can do that, and if she gets that, she's yours. Now, she's got to get that. Somehow, it's got to affect her neurology that, wow, this guy is not here for sex, but he's still here for me. This is very important. Now, especially if you're a guy having sex with somebody else. If you're not, it's a little weird. I'm always assuming that. I'm always assuming, but I'm wrong, right? I'm wrong. Everybody's doing this one, one thing. <clears throat> she has to know there's other girls.
Otherwise, you just seem desperate. The fact that you're putting up with dumb shit, you seem desperate. How do you make her want you a little more after she's super interested? She's super interested? How do you make her want you more? Brother, I'm lecturing. Can I call you in about 12 minutes? Yes. Tag, what do you mean tag? The, the logo? Just hashtags? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. We want me to text it to you. Which one are you talking about, bro? I don't do the same one. I do it differently every time. I gotta go to the studio. And well, who's this for? Okay, okay. Can you send me the song one more time, and then I'll just set up with Don for this week. Thank you, bud. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, a new song, just wait. Wait, 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 just wait. By around next Tuesday or Wednesday, um, my song with African rock star called, um, what's it called? It's not Sing About, it was called, it was called Sing About, we changed the name, that's why I can't remember the, the first, uh, the, the second. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. Shh. All this love. All this what? All this love. Oh, okay. Oh, All this love, yeah. Okay, anyways, so I gotta go now. I gotta go do this thing. Um, do I need to answer anymore? Oh, how do you get her interested if she's already super interested? Let me answer that, right? Interested even more. So you go super interested. So see, here's how my mind works. It rolodexes and finds girls that are super interested in my definition of what I think you're saying. And then I see how I make them more interested, and I'll tell you. So I have to find that super interested. It wouldn't be a girlfriend, so... Okay, there we go. So I found somebody. Now, how do I make them more interested? The moment you hit super interest, you <sighs> slow down a little bit. You know why? I promise you, she's going to slow down the moment she becomes super interested. Like, I promise you, the moment your girl shows you a high level of interest, you're just like, wow, I got her. Within days or hours, she's going to pull back from you. Okay? I don't know why they do this yet, but I, I've seen it all the time. So you need to then be ready for that and match her speed. And then you communicate the importance of the relationship where she's at with you with a slight threat of loss. Not like, you know, loss, but more like, hey, I'm going to lose interest here. Blah, blah, blah. Walk along the same path. But then every time you see her right there, you amplify the shit out of the attraction. You say, how do you do that? Get on my mentorship. I need to do my nails. I'm not going out like this. The purple is just wrong. It's super gay. I know. I need to do my nails. I'm not going out. I'm not going out like that. All right, everybody, listen up to what's coming up. If you haven't bought Game or Die, you could still get it. I'm going to have a Game or Die boot camp coming up. On the 20th of this month, it's going to be a product that's going to blow you away. It's going to be about three or, three or more hours of me in field out there seducing women. The audio, some video, I think. I don't know if there's video. And me having simultaneous lectures to my students as they were following me for three days doing this. Um, so that's called um, – fuck it. I forgot the name. I got two names in my hand. They're both good. So I used one of them. But I had two names and I forgot which one I chose. So just look forward to that, okay? And uh, tomorrow night, Sunday night, I don't know if there's a lecture, but there may be, okay? IMC Nation, be the best. Fuck the rest. Thanks for attending.